Uh, I'm representing the, my, my plugin, Stepper. It's a Renoise plugin. Um, I will not go too into detail what Renoise is. Um, Renoise is a tracker. It has tons of uh, DSPs. It can use v uh, VST plugins and um, can use Jack. It runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And um, yeah, I was using Renoise for a long time. And uh, trackers in general lack of uh, of uh, composing in a loop oriented way. So you uh, like like Ableton, for example, where you press play and then start modifying, uh, start patching your your system, and um, until you like what you hear and you save it and go to the next stage. Um, yeah, this is why I wrote uh, this plugin. Uh, I had a launchpad, and it's. I saw it's very obvious to use the launchpad, uh, launchpad to get a, a loop-based oriented workflow like in Ableton. And um, yeah, this is how I created Stepper. And I will walk you through the features. OK. Um, first of all, you have to start it. Oh, yeah, that could be. Um, it's not really interesting what's going on in Renoise that much. Uh, it's more or less what's going on in the camera, though. And uh, Renoise is just to there to see what's going on in Renoise. To see all this. Yeah. When you start the plugin, you see this. You have a lot of different uh, parameters you can press and configure. I will go into this deeper in the end if we have time. So when you start it. Um, now with that, um, you get this nice view. Um, uh, this is, oh, let's have to need some space here. Okay. So, yeah, when you start the, the plugin, you come in, uh, directly into this um, view where you have different uh, areas. Um, first of all, the area down here, where you can see it. These areas, there's also a line here you can't see completely because of the camera, um, is the keyboard. Um, you have these buttons where you can change the, um, the octave. And you have the off note that comes, is important for later. Uh, the, these buttons are the black ones, and these are the white ones. And here you can see in which uh, octave you are. Um, in this section, you have the instruments which are configured. You can see them up there. The first one, this one, is a kick. The next one is a bass. And uh, then you have nothing. And then you have two percussions and uh, a method, a uh, melody. Yeah, a melody. And right now the melody is... Uh, is uh, selected. Um, if you press one of the other uh, instruments, you see you select a different instrument up there and also you select a different track. This is one of the downsides of this stepper plugin, that every instrument belongs to one track. Normally you can use all instruments and all tracks as you like. Uh, you can't do this with stepper. Uh, because it's, yeah, otherwise I did not know how to match these things. Um, yeah, so there's uh, multiple techniques you can use to group these things. What I did right now is to uh, just leave an empty instrument in between, which is uh, nice, so you can see this is a group of instruments, this is a group of instruments, and so on. But you can also use the renoise grouping if you go in here and create a group and move the other one in here. Um, dun, 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 dun. Um, then you can't see this right now, but uh, these colors have changed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, my camera is not that good. Um, yeah, so this is another way to uh, to group your, your instruments. Actually, it it doesn't make so much sense in, in this mode. There's another mode where this grouping colors come way in, come in more way handy. Um, yeah, so the next one would be 
uh, step sequence. And I will not explain this line. It's not important for now. It's just effects, um, standard effects. So um, up here, uh, you can't see it, but there's also a labeling is a play button. If you play it, uh, if you press it, it starts playing. And instantly, you see this glider going on. And as you can see, it, uh, it, there's more uh, lines in the renoise than there's fields in here. This why we have zooming. We can zoom out. And now we have everything. So every dot in here is two lines in renoise. And you can zoom more out and more in if you have more lines configured per pattern. Um, yeah. Um, if you zoom in again, then you are able to use this button to uh, page through the views of the of the pattern. So, so this play button when you start when you started playing, you can use it when it's green. Um, then you're just playing it. When it's red, it's wait a second. When it's red, like now, you're also recording. Um, um, I, if you want to stop playing, you have to press it for a while. This is because I most of the time have the whole project playing and not stopping and never want to stop. <laughs> so so let's um, yeah, let's put in some kicks. Um, yeah, I zoom out for that and okay, sounds not that great, but better than nothing. Yeah, and as you see, it instantly puts in the the the, the notes which I already entered. Um, I can also insert notes by myself and remove them. And, um, yeah, like that. Exactly. Um, so, what's the next point? <laughs> um, when it's, oh yeah, we already had that, but. Yeah, when it gets too noisy, like it will be soon, then you can also mute it. And then unmute it again. Very nice feature because sometimes you do a lot of crazy stuff and after a while you recognize that uh, you are creating noise instead of music. Uh, <laughs> um, we also have on the other side, on this side, um, we, are, we have the ability to use different uh, lanes. Um, as you can see, because I pressed the second one, you can see that there's an, there opened a new lane where you can insert notes, which is quite handy when you have a percussion instrument where you have different uh, rims or claps or whatever, and want to sort them so they they can kind of overlap. And what you see automatically, if you select a different lane, that all the the, 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 the lane which is not selected right now, the column, I mean, um, get is still visible, but uh, hidden in a way. So you can enter notes again and see when they, when they, yeah, when they clash more or less. And you have four of them. That's the maximum. And it will be automatically generated. So basically, this tool is not nothing else than a view on Renoise. It's not the full capability of Renoise. It's just a view. So everything you do here is just a change on Renoise itself. Um, yeah. So next thing is um, because this uh, the, the pattern I just entered here is quite noisy and then nobody really likes it. There's the ability to remove it by just pressing these buttons, which is not that nice to do because it's a lot of clicking. Um, you can also remove them by, um, by creating copy-paste patterns. When you press this button down here, I don't know if you can see it, it's this one, then you get in a different mode. 
Um, you also can't, you can quite see it. It's, uh, this is a, these are four red buttons and four green buttons. And um, these are more or less copy-paste buffers. So you have eight copy-paste buffers of two different types. Um, these copy-paste buffer buffers are concentrating on um, one column. So if I select something, which I'm doing right now, and go to another column, I see the, the selection is gone. And when I want to place this pattern, which I just copied, um, I go to the uh, go to the to this to the space and just overwrite this. And as you can see on these um, gluing parts, that I only did, uh, I only uh, copied the the pattern in this column. In the other co uh, in the other columns, they still exist and can be overwritten. And the other ones doing ex almost the same, but they copy and paste all the four columns. For example, um, if I put a pattern like this in here, and like this, and like this, and like this, yeah, I have. Um, I put notes into into four columns, as you can see there and here. And when I use the another copy paste area and copy paste them, first of all, when I'm selecting. All the notes, I, I see them all gluing. And when I'm pasting now, I'm pasting in all four columns. Yeah. Good. So far, so good. Um, so now I can unmute it again. So. Yeah, and this copy-paste behavior, um, I mean these copy-paste buffers, they are globally for all instruments. So when I put a, a pattern in here, oh yeah, I f totally forgot, these buttons down here, um, they are, first of all, they symbolize the, 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 the type of copy-paste you can do with it. And also when you, when you click it, you clear this pattern. So it's empty again. And when you put something in here um, and go to another instrument, then and you and you paste it. Then you paste the the same pattern for another instrument, which uh, might not be handy most of the time, but sometimes it's cool, especially when you uh, have the same instrument multiple times in your project. There's some feature which is called a reference or something, where you can put in a a plugin multiple times without starting multiple instances. You have the instance only one. So, so far, any questions? <laughs> I don't think so. Ah, yeah. Test. Oh, yeah, it's on. Um, okay, in English. Um, uh, if I want to, so it's a tracker. I I only use trackers like until ten years ago, maybe. And when I want to lay down like harmonies, can I do it with the stepper plugin? So can I have multiple notes in a single step, and I can, you know. Um, you mean something like uh, this? A chord, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can you can insert an instrument if you want, or you can just press record, and, and then it will be recorded there where you can't see it because of the camera. Thank you. Okay, next thing um, becomes the, the thing which... Should I stop it? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, 
next thing will be the pattern matrix edit, uh, mix edit area, which is basically also a feature of Renoise already existing, um, because you have what you've seen so far is just one pattern, and you can create different patterns and arrange them here. And um, to have influence on that, I created a, a different mode, which is the pattern mixer mode. Um, <laughs> which looks, or which orientates very uh, quite similar to the, uh, or, or which orientates on the launchpad idea, where you have um, all the different patterns, like here, and uh, in, 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 in the track rows, and you have these selector, the selection right now. You can see this here, they are done by linking. This is the zero pattern, as you can see. And um, you can select one of these uh, um, yeah, patterns, and then you can see it flips up, and it will, come, it will kick in next time. Um, I can click these patterns, and it will jump out. Um, yeah, as you can see, um, the play button still is at the same position, so you can still play and record, which comes in handy when you have another instrument, like a piano, and um, you want to record something, and then you uh, press one of these uh, patterns, you record something, and then you think, ah, oh, that sounds good, let's go to the next one. Um, or, yeah, like this, like stuff like this. Um, so in here, there's also something like a, that you can also use copy paste. Um, I press start again, and I press these button, uh, press these patterns. I just entered entered them before. And um, with the red one, when you when you hold it, you can delete the pattern. You see also the lights on the side change. This is the the lights on the sides are are uh, are an easy. Uh, nah, I will see it on the, on, on the copy on the copy um, routine more clearly. The right next to the red one is uh, is an orange one, which is insert, which is a copy one, uh, just a copy button. If you press it, everything gets turned into orange, and now you can um, copy patterns by clicking on them. But you can also click on the scene button, and then you copy the whole thing in this scene. And it will be played next, as you can see. And the same holds for the delete one. And then it stopped playing. Um, yeah, we also have something uh, I also put something in like uh, inserting and removing patterns. If you press the plus and the minus one, you see it starting blinking, and then you can insert rows, which are empty. If you press delete first and then plus, you remove them. Well, basically, that's it. Um, this is more or less the feature thing, uh, the features of this plugin. It's uh, it's intended to compose music and not to play live with it. But um, you can render all of these patterns into a specific sample, into separated samples, and put them into uh, a plugin where you can live perform better. So this tool is not for live performance itself. Yeah. Another question. Thank you. Um, regarding the, the should I the, turn off the music? Uh. <laughs> the, the actual entering of the steps, so the the stage before. Yeah. Um, you were talking about different resolutions in a we noise compared to the to the pad. So it's possible for example to say okay i just want to have every quarter note represented on the on the launch pad 
so you just have in a four to four thing you just have four rows and uh you don't have to scroll down on your launch pad that's possible yes okay cool so you have up here is uh, 40 rows actually it's hexadecimal so it's four times 16 rows <laughs> 64 yeah yeah 64 i think it's 64 and uh, you can double it or you can uh, you use complete, something completely different in there and then it will count the the knobs which are here it will always when you when you select something you will always jump into in the highest resolution so every every button will be one line but you can zoom out as as long as there is possibility to zoom but if you see the whole pattern in 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 this um, area up here you have not the uh, you, you can't zoom out anymore so it will just then stop so you can uh, higher for example you can higher the resolution to four times the like like uh, 120 up there and say okay uh, where is it i want more lines per beat like four times more like 12 lines per beat and then zoom out and you have the same view on on this launch pad and it will be just a bit more different on the renoise yeah 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 no problem. Uh, we just use this other this cable. It's you always perfect. You will do perfect. the live performance in a second. Oh, thank you, but I'm not needed anymore. I forgot to uh, to send you that information. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I see. So, and let's say you you have set on a resolution for the pad, and you load a no, new pattern into Renoise, which has you know a different resolution. You and it has a node in a place that it's not represented on a pad. You don't see. I don't see it as a problem. It's just questioning how you handle the, the problematic things of different resolutions in Renoise versus the launch pad. Um, so, for example, if um, if we show all this, uh, if we show only every second line, um, then you will see only every second line in here. So you, if you put if you put a node between these lines, you will not see it in here if you zoomed out too much. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I will not glue it together. Something like if between. These, uh, if, if this, in between this zoom of area, there's one pattern, I will not show it up. I might uh, create an option for that later too. I don't know. Yeah, so back in the days when I was using trackers, um, I was thinking about having different, um, different editors for the notes inside. And obviously for different instruments, you want to have different it's not obvious, but sometimes you want different resolution for different instruments and automatically you will get into the problem of, okay, I have data already in the, in the track that it's not of the same resolution that I have in my editor. That's, well, it can happen. And um, if you know it and you have both, you can see both data, you see the pad and you see your screen and yeah, you just have to know that it can happen then it's okay i guess yeah exactly uh, i mean when i start doing music i always start with a very low resolution so i have basically 40 is most of the time this when i start and when i want when i create something like an instrument where i i i, I want to um want to put something between two lines there's multiple possibilities um you have an effect row in here for example where you can change the panning um, the volume or the velocity of an instrument or you can change the delay so this one is on when it when you put which is the default when you press it then you will the the note will be triggered right on the line um, if you change it to this position it will be triggered right between the lines and if you press this one it will be triggered in between the lines but a bit more to the downward there so and you have four other columns where you can put them on top for example um, 
um, if you have a pattern like this and you want to uh, want to uh, high frequently do a kick here I have to <laughs> then you have to turn on all the effects then you then you can put this one in here uh, I'm, I'm up there yeah you can see it here there's the delay and then you can go to the next one Ah, up there, up there, <laughs> and and then this should sound very weird, but then you basically simulate that. If this is not enough, then you can change, um, you can um, bulk edit the whole project and say, okay, insert uh, one line between everything, and then it will change the default of to to eighty lines per pattern, and you can go on. Okay, last question maybe from my side. Um, did you consider not doing it as a Vnoise plugin, but more general, you know, maybe it sounds like a very uh, nice project, could be usable in other software. I know that it's now kind of tight <laughs> to, to Vnoise. Yeah. And I wouldn't, well, from the top of my head, I wouldn't know how to just have it like a track MIDI sequencing thing, but did you consider it or did you immediately say, okay, I just use WeNoise, it helps me, it's fine? Um, yeah, no, I I always uh, use Renoise for the first steps because it comes with tons of uh, features, which I'm using to create instruments and all that. And it's a perfect point to start. So. Um, I had to recreate all that over and over again. I had to recreate uh, something to uh, play with VSTs. I have to recreate something that plays waveforms and do pitching of waveforms and looping of waveforms and uh, doing envelopes on waveforms and modulation and uh, and different forms and filters and stuff like that. So I never thought of that in in this place. Maybe something like a MIDI controller which sends MIDI out, that would be the maximum, but um, yeah, this is not on, on the on the to-do list right now. Right now we try to, or I do, as some people on the net also want to have this plugin for their hardware, there's a Launchpad Pro, and for some reason they changed completely the, the protocol, and um, there's the Akai something, I don't know what the name is, it also has uh, eight times eight buttons. Uh, actually, that's that's all you need. You need eight times eight buttons, and then the stuff around here is quite optional, um, and I can use it. And so right now, I'm I'm focusing on porting this plugin to all the other hardware too. And uh, yeah, so this is why I never I never I never got the idea to to create an own Jack plugin for that because uh, yeah. Reno is uh, yeah my my tool of doing work with in music. <laughs> if there are no further questions, maybe you can do like a short live sequencing of things just to show how you work with it. Okay, sure. And uh, as a training for this evening, maybe. Okay, I have to there's there's no off note on this looping of the of the of this instrument. This is just a loop and, and there's no off note to turn it off, so this is why I stopped it. Um yeah. Most, most of the time I start with a with a kick. Um because I love techno, I do <laughs> very simple kick patterns like these. <laughs> Uh, maybe you turn off the BPMs. Nah, no, it's okay. Just go into there. OK, 
Okay. in mind how to work with it. So first of all, I, um, I play around in this pattern uh, area, in this area where I punch in some, um, yeah, some, some, some patterns, and then I arrange them a bit. Basically, it's, it's kind of this test-driven you know, test, test development process bit. I have these three steps, punch in a lot of notes until it's starting to get noisy, then try to arrange them, then delete them, and then again do this again until at the end stuff falls off that just sound interesting together and then yeah this is what i understand between music making so and um as you can uh, as you can see or recognize that i was uh constantly playing music and um normally the the way people work with trackers is 
um, to press the space bar a lot, which starts the project and stops the project, um, using a lot of shortcuts, going through these pages and punching in notes, or we're doing the editor. And um, this is uh, its very awesome if you can do it. But uh, <laughs> if you can't, it's... Yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's hard, and I can't do it, or at least not for a long time, because I'm getting annoyed of it very quickly. Um, because I I create the music I create with this doesn't I don't like it, and the music I create on on this loop idea is is much more intuitive for me, and um, this is why I created this plugin, and I hope other people like it too. Some of them in the internet are quite happy with it. <laughs> And uh, of course, if you have a launchpad, you can download Renoise for free. Uh, the only thing you can't do is you can't render. But um, no, you can save. You can do everything with it. No problem. But you can't render to waveforms. And this, there comes the interesting part. For example, if you have a lot of VSTs, you can render them to instruments. And instruments are very powerful. You can put in, uh, 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 you can put in um, DSPs on top of the instruments and, and stuff like this. But you can't do this with an unpaid version. It costs 60 euros or something. The only thing you cannot, free, you cannot do with a free version is render to a waveform. Yeah, exactly. But it's jack compatible. Yeah. So you could just send the output of Renos through Audacity or Ardor and records exactly, the yeah. output. So yeah, but as I as I told before, um, my work, pr work process would be um, render this whole project and render all these files separately. So oh, this yeah, is an option yeah, you can right. do. Yeah, yeah, this is what you tedious, can't yeah. do. And also, I'm I'm part of the team more or less. Actually, not really, but um, I'm just one of the beta users of for Linux. And the six euros is not that much uh, yeah, compared course, to for Bitwig. So, but if you don't have enough money, uh, there's always the option to use it for free. I think after 30 or 50 days, it starts bothering you on the start and say like, "Don't you want to play? Uh, don't yeah, you want to yeah, pay yeah. for it or something?" And that's it. But you can constantly you can, can still use it. Yeah, and also can oh, what well, I forgot. Uh, you can also instead of triggering waveforms or VSTs, you can also send MIDI, MIDI information from it. So if you, what, what, you what, I, what I told you, if you, if you have a project where you can, um, uh, where you only create an instrument which is doing MIDI, then you, then you can control your, uh, what's it called, modular synthesizer, which is somewhere and have a lot of modules, then you can control it also as well with the Renoise. I did that already, actually. It's good. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>